In the early years of American aviation, aircraft wings were not designed. They were guessed. Engineers changed thickness, curvature, and span by trial and error, hoping each new modification would improve lift or reduce drag. But as aircraft became faster and heavier, these guesses became dangerous. Some wings produced excellent lift, but stalled violently. Others were stable, but created enormous drag that reduced speed and range. The United States needed a clear aerodynamic standard, not more experimentation. That standard came from Ira H. Abbott. Working at Nacier Langley in the 1930s and 1940s, Abbott helped build the most complete and reliable airfoil database the world had ever seen. His work allowed American engineers to predict how a wing would behave before it was built, at takeoff, at cruise, and at the limits of speed. Because of him, aircraft designers stopped designing wings blindly and started using measured aerodynamic science. The result was a generation of US aircraft that flew farther, faster, and more safely. Not because engines changed, but because the wings were finally understood. Ira Herbert Abbott was born in 1898 in the United States. During a period when aviation was still an experimental technology rather than an engineering discipline, his early education reflected the industrial and scientific priorities of the era. He studied mechanical engineering and applied aerodynamics, focusing on mathematics, structural behavior, and fluid mechanics. Unlike many early aviation designers who came from workshop or military backgrounds, Abbott's formation was academic and analytical. This gave him a structured approach to aeronautical problems from the beginning of his career. After completing his university training, Abbott joined the National Advisory Committee for Aeronautics, NACA. NACA was founded in 1915 by the US government to solve the scientific limitations of flight rather than to build aircraft. By the late 1920s and early 1930s, when Abbott entered NACA's Langley Memorial Aeronautical Laboratory in Virginia, American aviation faced a critical need for standardization. Aircraft were becoming larger, faster and more specialized, but there was no consistent aerodynamic reference for wing design. Each manufacturer relied on proprietary airfoil shapes, many of which were only partially tested. This created unpredictable performance, especially in stall behavior, drag levels, and structural load distribution. Abbott's work at Langley focused on systematic airfoil measurement and validation. At the time, airfoil data was scattered and inconsistent. Wind tunnel tests varied in scale, Reynolds number and methodology, making comparisons unreliable. Abbott helped develop standardized test procedures that produced repeatable results. This allowed NACA to create a uniform aerodynamic baseline for US aircraft manufacturers. His objective was to ensure that wing behavior could be predicted quantitatively rather than through field experience alone. One of Abbott's major contributions was his involvement in the development and refinement of the NACA four-digit and five-digit airfoil series. These airfoils were defined mathematically and tested experimentally to produce known lift, drag, and moment characteristics. Instead of designing wings through trial and error, engineers could now select an airfoil based on mission requirements, such as low speed lift, cruise efficiency, or structural thickness. This dramatically reduced design uncertainty. Abbott also participated in the creation of what later became the NACA Airfoil Catalogues, a comprehensive set of performance tables used by aircraft designers throughout the United States. These catalogues documented airfoil performance across a wide range of speeds and operating conditions. They provided critical data for both civil and military aircraft development, particularly during the build-up to World War II. By the late 1930s, NACA's airfoil reports were considered the most reliable aerodynamic references available anywhere. Another key area of Abbott's work was the study of drag characteristics and pressure distribution on wing sections. He analyzed how airfoil thickness and curvature affected airflow stability, 
boundary layer behavior and stall progression. This research improved not only performance, but also aircraft handling. Pilots operating aircraft designed with Abbott's data experienced more predictable control response and safer low speed flight envelopes. By the early 1940s, as the United States accelerated aircraft production for wartime needs, Abbott's research directly influenced the design of American fighters, bombers, and transport aircraft. Wings were no longer shaped arbitrarily. They were built according to tested aerodynamic profiles that balanced lift, drag, and structural efficiency. This ensured that aircraft could meet performance requirements without compromising safety or manufacturability. Ira H. Abbott's role at NACA was therefore foundational. He did not design a single famous airplane. He helped create the scientific framework that made modern wing design possible. His work turned airfoil selection from an experimental process into a precise engineering decision, providing American aviation with the stability and predictability it required during one of its most critical periods of development. By the early 1930s, the United States had a growing aircraft industry, but it still lacked a unified aerodynamic standard. Manufacturers designed wings based on internal experience or foreign data, which led to inconsistent performance from one aircraft to another. This fragmentation created operational risks, especially as aircraft became faster, heavier, and more structurally complex. The absence of standardized aerodynamic references made large-scale industrial progress slow and uncertain. Ira Abbott's work at NACA changed that. Instead of allowing every manufacturer to test and guess independently, Abbott helped establish a centralized aerodynamic knowledge base that the entire US aviation sector could rely on. This shift meant that aircraft wings were no longer shaped through intuition or trial and error alone. They were shaped according to measured and repeatable aerodynamic behavior. One of Abbott's most decisive contributions was the creation and refinement of the NACI four-digit and five-digit airfoil series, which became the backbone of American wing design. These airfoils were not random shapes. Each one represented a precise aerodynamic solution with documented lift, drag, and pressure distribution characteristics. Engineers could select an airfoil based on mission requirements rather than speculation. This allowed aircraft design to scale. For the first time, manufacturers could design wings that produced predictable lift across the span, minimized induced drag, and maintained stable control response at low speed. These factors were essential for military trainers, transport aircraft, and early bombers. Abbott's work ensured that aircraft built in California, New York, or Texas performed according to the same aerodynamic expectations. Beyond shaping airfoils, Abbott's research influenced how wings were twisted, tapered, and structurally balanced. Instead of reinforcing wings after failures occurred, engineers could now anticipate aerodynamic load paths and structural stress distribution. This reduced unnecessary structural weight and improved aerodynamic efficiency at cruise. The timing of this mattered. As the United States prepared for large-scale aircraft production before and during World War II, aircraft needed to be manufactured rapidly and flown by pilots with limited training time. Wings had to behave consistently and safely. Abbott's standardized aerodynamic methods made this possible aircraft no longer entered dangerous flight regimes unexpectedly because their lift behavior had already been validated mathematically and experimentally. This directly affected American air power. Bombers required wings that could carry large payloads without excessive drag. Fighters required wings that remained stable in dives and high-speed maneuvers. Transport aircraft required forgiving stall characteristics for takeoff and landing on short or improvised airfields. Abbott's work supported all of these. Requirements at the design level. His influence also extended into wind tunnel methodology. Abbott helped formalize how airfoil and wing models were tested so that results were not distorted by turbulence or scale effects. 
This increased the accuracy of Nakaoditer and made it usable for real-world aircraft design rather than academic analysis. It also allowed Nakae's research to serve as the national aerodynamic authority that manufacturers trusted. By the mid-1940s, nearly every major American aircraft manufacturer was using NACA airfoil data derived from the programs Abbott helped build. This meant that aerodynamic innovation became faster because engineers started from proven baselines rather than rediscovering principles already understood. In effect, Abbott's work turned the wing from an experimental component into an engineered system governed by mathematics and physics. He did not design airplanes. He designed the aerodynamic language that allowed the United States to build aircraft faster, safer and more efficiently than any other nation at the time. And that is why his role in aviation history remains foundational. By the time the Second World War reached its most critical phase, Ira Abbott's work was no longer confined to wind tunnels and research reports. It had become embedded in the design logic of American aircraft production. What he helped establish at NACA was not simply a set of airfoil shapes or aerodynamic tables, but a method that allowed aircraft wings to be engineered as complete systems rather than isolated components. This shift meant that performance improvements were no longer based on guesswork. They were the result of predictable aerodynamic behaviour. Abbott's greatest achievement was transforming theoretical aerodynamics into something the aviation industry could actually use. His research allowed engineers to choose airfoils based on mission requirements instead of trial and error. Lift distribution, structural strength, drag behaviour and stall characteristics could be evaluated analytically before an aircraft ever left the drawing board. This dramatically reduced development risk and shortened the time required to move from design to operational deployment. This capability was decisive for wartime production. The United States was manufacturing aircraft at a scale never seen before. Speed of production mattered, but so did reliability. Aircraft built with poorly understood wings could not survive the stress of long missions, high speeds and heavy payloads. Abbott's work ensured that the wings of American bombers, fighters and transports behaved consistently across wide flight envelopes. Instead of reinforcing wings blindly, engineers could now balance structural weight with aerodynamic efficiency. As aircraft designs grew larger and faster, the aerodynamic penalties of inefficient wings became increasingly severe. Induced drag reduced range. Abrupt stall behaviour increased pilot workload and accident rates. Structural inefficiencies added weight that engines had to overcome. Abbott's research addressed all of these factors simultaneously. By refining and validating the NACA airfoil families, he helped standardise how wings generated lift, how they stalled, and how they could be manufactured at scale. One of the most important consequences of this work was operational confidence. Pilots could fly aircraft designed with NACA profiles, knowing that their handling characteristics were stable and predictable. Engineers could modify or scale designs without relearning the physics of the wing. The aviation industry now shared a common aerodynamic language. This was critical for rapid wartime innovation, where small improvements in performance translated directly into strategic advantage. Abbott's influence also extended beyond the war itself. The same aerodynamic tools he helped develop became essential for the next generation of aircraft, including early jet fighters and long-range bombers of the Cold War period. While propulsion systems evolved, the aerodynamic foundation remained rooted in NACA research. His work did not become obsolete. It became infrastructure. Unlike many figures in aviation history, Ira Abbott never became a household name. His impact was quiet and systemic. He did not build a famous aircraft. He built the scientific environment that made advanced aircraft design possible. His contributions ensured that American aviation could scale, innovate and operate safely under the most demanding conditions. In the end, Abbott's legacy is not visible in a single machine. 
It exists in the logic of how wings are designed, tested and trusted. Modern aircraft continue to rely on principles that emerged from his work at NACA. Every stable takeoff, every predictable stall, and every efficient wing owes something to the foundation he helped establish. Ira Abbott did not chase glory. He gave aviation a way to move forward, precisely, safely, and at scale. And that is why his work still matters today.